Hello and welcome to a new video about electric fields. Today we're going to talk about how to draw a field, how to imagine a field, how to make an image of a field, how to present an electric field. This is what I want to show you, what, what things we can do, what we need to think of. And we will start with the easiest case. One single positive char charge, point form charge. Yeah? So we're looking into here is a positive charge, yeah? plus Q. Positive charge. And now we can think about this field is spreading out of this positive charge. It's just, you know, like a glowing bowl. Whoa, the field is coming out of this. And how to draw this better than a kid would draw the sun with rays so starting coming out of this of this ball of this point yeah and in this case we do not call them rays we call them field lines right so these are the field lines and to know in which direction we draw little arrows. So these things here are the so-called field lines. And we're talking about the field of a positive charge. Right? And if we can manage to draw the field lines in a matter that, you know, the field lines, they are, they are spreading, they are, they are not, it's just a two-dimensional representation now because they are also spreading in this direction, every direction, like, like a second glowing ball in all direction away, the field lines and so on. So that the segments in between, they are pyramids, you can also think cones or, yeah. It's, it's hard to imagine it's three-dimensional, I know. <laughs> but if you can think about that you can draw those field lines in a matter that in between those field lines, uh, there's always the same portion of, of uh, electric flux inside. We said, okay, the electric flux in a closed surface here must be the charge which is inside Gauss law. Okay? And if we can draw the field lines in a fashion that in between two field lines is always the same amount of flux. Yeah? Then those areas between the field lines are called uh, uh, flux tubes. Tube shaped and uh, carry a amount of flux. And then the density, the density of the field lines is showing the density of the flux tubes, of course, because in between there's always the same flux. And the density of the flux tubes flux tubes is the flux density and this is representing the strength of the field. The closer the lines are together, like here, the field is very strong and the far away, the more apart are the field lines, huh? but it still carries the same amount of flux and the field is not that strong. Field lines. And then there are also things like if we connect all points where the field has the same strength, the same amount, yeah? then in this case, this would be spheres, yeah? like that. Is a sphere? Then there's the next sphere somewhere. These are all points where we do have the same electric field strength. Hmm? So, and if we draw those lines, those areas, surfaces, uh, in a fashion that between two of those surfaces is always the same change of electric field. So here's one value of electric field, here's another value of electric field. Then those things are called potential surfaces. Right? 
And, of course, here, the closer the field lines are together, yeah, the closer also the potential surfaces are together. Because actually it's, it's, it's working with squared, right? Because the next one would be out here somewhere. Uh, very far away already. Uh, squared. Uh, because the, the field is dropping with the area potential surfaces. Right? In between two potential surfaces, there is always a selectable amount of, of volts. <laughs> field of a positive charge. How would a field of a negative charge look like? Field of a negative charge. So this time we have, I'm now draw it as a blue point, minus Q. So we have no plus Q, we have minus Q. And this time we will not have to think about a shining bowl, glowing bowl. We have to think about something which is sucking up all available light from the surroundings. Yeah. However, it does pretty much look exactly the same as the field of a positive charge, but only in the other direction. So the field lines are now going towards the negative charge. So going into the negative charge. So positive charges are, uh, are wells, <laughs> uh, sources, and negative charges are sinks of, of, of the electric field. And the potential surfaces, they pretty much look the same. Yeah? So here we have one potential surface, here, and also squared, of course. Look exactly the same. Also, uh, sphere surfaces. And now we have to talk about what is happening if we don't have only one charge. What is happening if we have two charges? And I will draw a positive charge and a negative charge. And I will say that's uh, the same with plus Q, with minus Q the same amount, but negative. Yeah. So what if we want to know here at this point, then this charge and this charge would have components. The field of the red charge is in this direction. The field of the blue charge is in this direction to the blue charge and not that big yeah, because it's far away yeah. and the combination we do the superposition of those two yeah. the combination will go in that direction that's the electric field at this point and we can do this at every point here and if those two charges are equal from, from the amount yeah, but not from the sign then we have somewhere here a mirror surface, looking like a mirror surface. Yeah. And I will now try to show how this, this field looks like. So here we have one field line which is going straight to the middle. Then the next field line will be a little bit bold. Yeah. The next field line also a little bit more. Like that. The next field line, now let's try to hit it here, passing through. Yeah. So it's always symmetrical. Left and right are symmetrical, up and down are symmetrical, because actually those forms are three-dimensional, right? So this is like blown up like an onion, like I don't know how to call this form. It's not because here it's really starting to 
look a little bit strange also going in this direction. The further we go here, it's always closing here. I yeah, will not draw this. So here. Ooh, coming back here. All right. This is how this looks like. Always such onion, <laughs> onion shaped things. Huh? And of course we can draw the direction of the field in, on, away from the positive charge. So we draw those little arrows here. And we are closing into the negative charge. So we also draw these little arrows here. This would be the field lines of this type of distribution, charge distribution. Yeah. And well, what's about the, the potential surfaces? Well, this is one potential surface here, of course. Yeah. And then it starts here almost shaped like, and then always 90 degree to the field lines. So it is looking, this is now more looking like a torus. Looking like that. So the potential surfaces are here close to the charge, they are sphere type and then they are getting deformed the further away they are from the charge, they are getting really deformed and of course they are always 90 degree, I try to draw this here, 90 degree between, here we have always 90 degree, always, hmm. does not fit perfectly, but all right. Such thing, yeah, such field is called dipole field. This thing here, yeah, because it's an electric dipole and this is the field. And dipole field has a great importance because if you have a amount of charges somehow in a, in a certain pattern, in a certain fashion uh, mounted or displaced, placed somewhere, yeah? and you looking at it from far away, it looks like a dipole field. Yeah? So a, a, a mixture between different charges from far away is always looking like a dipole field. Good. Uh, this is how we can imagine, how we can build up um, pictures of, of, of charge of, of electric fields to, to superposition. And now let's think about something. Yeah? Let's think about having a superposition like that. So we have one positive charge, one positive, two positive, 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 a lot of positive charges in a row. And this is, is somehow chained to each other. So this is going further and further and further. Yeah? This is called a line charge. Line charge. And now let's pick one. Yeah? The, elect the, the, the field from this is going in this direction. Okay. Now let's pick here one, two, three away. The field of this one is going this direction. Little close, not that high anymore, huh? because it's far away. 
and also the three far away from here is going in this direction. And now we see the components left and right, they are balanced. Yeah? If all charges here have the same amount, yeah? this is now this is typical for line charge. Yeah? So for every charge on the left side, which would produce a component of the field in this direction, there's a counterpart on the right side, yeah? which is producing exactly the same field in this direction. So this direction, left and right, there is no field component left. The only field which we see on the line charge is away from the line charge, 90 degree away from the line charge. So it always looking in this direction. And if positive line charge, we are going away from the line charge. That's the electrical field of a line charge. If we would look from this the side, it would exactly look like that. Yeah? But then this would be, uh, you know, pieces of a cake. Yeah? And so the, the potential surfaces, they're also like that. So here they are very close to each other. They are cylinders now. Yeah? Not sears like here, they are cylinders now. But if you look from this side, if this is the projecting point of this line, it would exactly look the same because of course it is always, there is also the square inside. So we're going further and further apart with those. The field is also degrading over time, over, over distance, uh, line charge. And now let's have a look how this is looking for a surface charge. Let's say this is a charge surface. Uh, and now that I have already explained to you, and this surface will also be going further here. Just drawing a part of this surface, okay? So this is spread the surface. And for every point above this surface, there's always left, right, before, after, I don't know, there's always a counterpart, a counter charge, because there are a lot of, we can think about a lot of point charges close to each other, a lot of points everywhere, and they're all these points, they are filling up this, 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 this surface charge. And so, since the components not directed normally away from the surface charge, will there's always a counterpart. If there's always a mirror charge, yeah, which will kill the components parallel to the surface charge. So what is left actually are lines which are just going up and down normally through this surface charge. There are no other components, huh? and there we will simply move away from here. These are the field lines of a surface charge. That's it. And how does the potential surfaces look like? Well, they are parallel, of course. They are parallel to the surface. I will also draw the same portion of surface here with the with my surface. Parallel. And now this this field does this get weaker? 
mid distance, this distance? No. So the surface, the potential surfaces, they have the same, they are equidistant, they have always the same distance to each other. Yeah? They have always the same distance. This field is very uniform, is very homogeneous, and this is how this is called. So this is a surface charge. Homogeneous. It's a homogeneous field which is generated by this. And now let's think about what is happening if we have two of those surface charges. So we have one surface charge here, positive, and this will go further away here, further away, further away. And we have somewhere a negative. surface charge, also going further away, just for the portion. The field of this red one yeah, is going like this, away, this is the field lines of the red one. This direction, of course also in this direction, it's the same. and away from the surface. This is not wrong, we only look at the edge, all right? So we are looking, it's projecting this, 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 this. And this homogeneous field, looking of the red charge is looking like this. And now let's have a look at the blue charge. If they are the same, if they have the same strength, it yeah, will pretty much look the same. I just draw it with an offset so that we can have better view of it. But now the arrows are two. Hmm? They are two the negative charge. And what we notice, huh? in this area, the arrows are in this and this direction. If both charges are equally, yeah, then we have here, here is no field. And here, also, no field. In between, the field is somehow doubled. Yeah? So, if we have two charges, two plates, and this is actually the reason why I always drawn this. I have always said, okay, there's a positive plate, there's a negative plate, and in between we have a homogeneous field. Ta -ta. This is the reason for that. Okay, it is the reason we have a positive plate, we have a negative plate. Outside the plates there is no field, and, and, and the edges looks a little bit different, yeah? but it, the, the majority of the field is concentrating between those two plates, and outside the plates there's nothing. Yeah? This is really a technical application here. There is an application called uh, Capacitor. We will talk about the Capacitor in a few videos. Yeah? I'm going to explain how this Capacitor is working. It's exactly working like this, but what it implies, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, presentation of electric fields. This is how it is done. Yeah? Field lines, potential surfaces, in between the field lines, we have our flux tubes, and that's it. Yeah. Up to now we always talked about, yeah, we have charges somewhere placed, yeah, and where around those charges is empty room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. This is how it is in reality, right? In reality we have, we have matter, there's a matter everywhere, there's matter everywhere. And we talked about that. Matter is built of atoms. Atoms is built of charged particles. We have an electric field and we have charged particles. So there must be an effect of the electric field or some effect of the matter for the electric field. How is this? How? What is happening there? This we're going to try to, I'm going to try to explain 
uh, in the next videos. Next video is about uh, conductive materials. So conductive materials in the electric field. What is happening there? For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.